Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Dexter Season 6 Thoughts Before I get too far into this, to start on a lighter note, the back of the cover has him making blood angels, undoubtedly reliving some not-so-fond childhood memories. This season is about religion and... <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I will not go hard on religion in this video. And honestly, I don't think that the season goes too hard on atheism. I'm, I'm not gonna like say it doesn't go too hard on this faith or that faith. The season is basically primarily about Christianity but it doesn't really say or do anything against other religions. But, but yeah, it's not too hard on atheism, and it doesn't go entirely easy on religion either. Now, I... I have to get out of the way. As you may have guessed, I tend to do these videos right after having completed the the subject of the video. So yes, I just watched Deborah walking in on Dexter's kill and yeah, obviously I am just extremely psyched to get to season seven, which is not yet in my possession, but yeah, at it's not the first time that the season ends on a strong hint for what the next season will be about, but I, th I think this is the first time that it really ends on such a cliffhanger. Yeah, the... With, with that out of the way. Actually, that, that does bring up the, the ending of the second to last episode. I seriously thought they were gonna, like, early season alias it with, like, ending on a huge cliffhanger and then, like, resolve that really quickly in the next episode. But nope, they go all the way with, you know, the fire is started and Dexter survives and escapes and, yeah, you know, it ends with him there out on the sea. That was... That was a really great way to, to end it, and it just, it really highlights how excellent the show is compared to a lot of television. You know, don't, don't end on this huge, you know, okay, there are, there are cliffhanger endings in, in the show, no doubt, but it's, I don't know, I, I don't think it's too bad on that as, as well. And, and speaking of things that they do really well, and in part because they do them so rarely, I... I think I might have screamed... I know I got out of my seat when Deborah went all Shannon Boone on Dexter. And then it turns, of course it's a dream, because it's, it's like, they've done that a few other times. I'm going to try not to spoil other seasons in this video. They've done that other times, but each time it's so insanely... They do it so rarely, and it's the kind of thing that you can see actually happening in that situation. And it's just... Yeah, it's, it's so powerful each time. Now... I suppose, yes, to, to get into the, 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 yeah, the, the religion aspect. Of course, there's also the, sort of the, the side focus 
of the season of the future, which in part comes up, and that's that's kind of the first time religion gets brought up in this, the, the choice of a preschool for Harrison, and what foundation do you lay, I think is, yeah, my grammar is not always good. I hope you will forgive me. Let it go. As this season suggests, as Brother Sam would suggest. Yes, the what what foundation for your kids, for your progeny, because as as a parent you have to you can't ensure or ensure their future, but you can try to to build a foundation to to guide them in the right direction. And obviously as an atheist I don't you know maybe maybe skeptic's the better word. I'm I'm not I'm more of a skeptic than an atheist at, at this point. Anyway, as a skeptic I don't necessarily think that religion is necessary for a strong foundation for the future. But of course it can be and it certainly is Religion is all about the future, De depending on the, you know, the monotheism suggests that the future is one of a heaven and, you know, a, a sublime existence where, yeah, you know, no more pain and, and suffering and, you know, other religions might say that the, the future is to you know, to, to ex escape from the, the wheel of continuous rebirth, reincarnation. But, but yes, the, it's, it's very much preoccupied with the future and, and ensuring that the future is a good one. So it makes a lot of sense to bring up that in relation to that. And of course, the future in regards to Harrison has been brought up before, and it's it's very much something that keeps coming up, that, that keeps being on Dexter's mind, and as, as he says at the start of the season, he's been so preoccupied with what he doesn't want to pass on, he has not given a lot of thought to what he does want to pass on, and Religion has indeed been brought up in relation to the the future of of Harrison, and here it it is brought to the forefront, or or more so. It's overall the the season is about religion, and and the relationship between religion and Harrison's future, and and Dexter and Harrison's future is, like I said, a, a side focus. Now, I suppose... Yes, I, I think I will stay on the, on the track of religion. The... Actually, yes, now I remember. I wanted to finish off the, the future aspect. Of course, Ronnie, give these people air Cox as the Tooth Fairy also brings up the future. What will Dexter become? What what becomes of aging serial killers? Of course not a lot of serial killers do make it to old age because they're caught or yeah some something happens. You live by the, the sword or gardening shears, chainsaw, what have you, die by a, a similar instrument. And so the Tooth Fairy was very careful and was never caught and he ends up in a, yeah, in, in a retired folks home. I, I just love that Ronnie Cox is actually still able to portray a despicable villain. I mean, the dude was awesome at it in the 80s. 
and he can still do it in, in the, the 2010s. That is just, yeah, it, the, the difference is that now his, his character is in a, you know, an old folks home. That's, that's awesome. And the episode ends with, you know, Ronnie Cox brings it up, you know, he's like, you're a serial killer, what do you think will happen to you in the future? And Dexter, the Dexter kind of said, you know, he's, he assures himself that this won't happen to me. And at the same time, it, it's kind of, it still stings a little. That, that Ronnie Cox said it, and the end of the episode, he's trying to put in the, the blood slide of, of Ronnie Cox's Tooth Fairy, and the, the shelf he's using to, to rest it on collapses, the, the, the blood slide, or at least a blood slide, but I believe it's Ronnie Cox's blood slide, cracks and Dexter says what the audience you know figured there's no way to tell which is which he can't put them back in order there is no order anymore and that that is exactly that what the fact that that we can control our lives currently in, in sort of the, in our adulthood. We are, we are no longer children. We are not yet retired. You know, we're out in the world. We might have some control over our lives, our, our you know, career, love life, what have you. But can that last? And, and what if it doesn't? What do we, how do we, you know, how do you pick yourself back up when, when something happens? And, and Dexter is all about control, which makes it a little funny that, that Jamie, like, in the, yeah, the last episode, she, you know, she finds the knife that Colin, that, that Travis brought out, and she's all like, Dexter, and you know, oh, it won't go in the blonde, hmm, weird. Well, it'll go in the, the drawer then, you know, and yeah, and, and the, Travis goes in and just grabs, you know, goes into a stranger's house who he believes he's killed, you know, unboxes a, a package that came to the door, he, you know, puts on one of the guy's shirts, he, you know, he grabs a box of cereal, pours it out in his hand, just, you know, goes, I thought I was the only one who did that, but, you know, small world. I don't think that's the right saying for that. Whatever. Yes. Yeah, so so it's it's a little funny that she's you know she thinks but but you know she's more focused on Harrison. It it does still make sense. It makes sense for a character. I'm not crying you know foul on like you know character. Yeah, in, inconsistent character portrayal. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, the the future. Of, of him as a serial killer and the future of his son and he has that thing of you know daddy's box and the the monster story again and he replaces the box he gets a you know a box like it or empties out but anyway it becomes Harrison's box and it re it, it channels the yeah, the, the Harrison's attention towards the box into a box for some of his toys or stuffed animals, something like that. And yeah, that's again kind of the, you know, trying to avoid that Harrison becomes him and yeah, sh shaping a future for Harrison that is not one of, of 
you know, monsters and, and the like. And of course, it, it also makes sense because children are certain that there are you know, monsters under the bed, monsters in the closet. And so, so yeah, there we have some, some further development of that. Now, yes, the, the religion aspect, it, it brings up, you know, what kind of what can it do for, for people. And, you know, we, we see Brother Sam and immediately the question of can religion reform is brought up and Dexter is at first as as the you know the rest of you know Miami Metro homicide is certain that Brother Sam is not reformed and he has he has former convicts working for him and this whole thing and indeed one of Brother Sam's earlier you know employees did eventually kill someone. And Brother Sam says, honestly, you know, my prayers are with his family and, and his victim, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't, I, do, I don't remember if he said, think about them or pray for them, something like that. And once we find out what Brother Sam is really like, indeed that turns out to be true. He does seek to reform, and as we see again with Nick, doesn't always work, and that's kind of the thing. It again, the not trying to be hard on religion, but religion can reform, but it won't always. The you know Nick says you know my life sucked before, it still sucks. So yeah, it's you might say that religion can help reform, but it isn't. A magic fix-all. It's not going to ensure that one becomes reformed. But yeah, in instant at, at first, Dexter and the the squad do not believe that Brother Sam has. You know, Dexter's all ready to to kill him, and you hear the gunshot in the house, and then it's like, oh, Nick fired at me because he was high. Didn't they actually say he was stoned? Do people actually like like weed? Do do people actually? ever fire a gun when, when high on weed, maybe Brother Sam stole his Doritos. Now, yes, the, the that's, you know, obviously one aspect, and then it also, it brings up God can be an excuse for better or for worse. Brother Sam himself says this, he is, he is pragmatic enough that he realizes this and and you know he isn't intolerant he he f realizes that Dexter is not you know not religious to to start with and he doesn't you know he tries to get him into it but he still doesn't ask that you know that Dexter he doesn't say that Dexter has to you know and, and certainly he's, he's a good guy. He, he really does, you know, a lot to help Dexter's car and the whole, you know, the thing with that, you know, keep, he just keeps driving the, and, and the thing with, yeah, he keeps, he keeps having car accidents because, you know, at first he just did it by himself, but then the tooth fairy, you know, he figures out, when were you on to me? It's, it's brilliant because you believe him, Dexter, and you believe. I, I got on the wrong bus and I'm like, I'm in the middle of nowhere, can you please come pick me up? And, and of course he would call, he would call Dexter too, because he's a jerk, you know? It's like being trapped in a toxic cloud that cheats. And so instantly he's, you know, he's threatening Dexter and Dexter in intentionally rams the car and then, you know, Brother Sam's like, again? And, you know, Harrison, get the car. Yeah, somebody has to drive this guy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Brother Sam's a good guy and he really tries to help everyone. Now, the... And, and again, the, the... 
when you when you reach out to someone, when you try to the the show talks very much about light and dark, maybe especially this season, and you know, Brother Sam reaches out with light, hoping to bring forth the light in others, including Nick. And sometimes, when you know, he's he's entirely vulnerable. He he risks his life to save Nick when the the game comes up. And it, yeah, it sometimes when you're that vulnerable, when you focus that much on the light, sometimes the darkness, you know, destroys you or takes something away from you. And so Nick was not able to fully embrace the light. Which again, I'm not saying that, you know, that's, that's the thing, his life did not change for the better. And, yeah, and in that case, religion won't necessarily help. Now, the... So, so yeah, in, in trying to help Nick, he, you know, he ended up dead. And that, of course, brings up the... Or at least, I don't remember if that was brought it up, but certainly something brought up in this season is cause and effect and can... Dexter be responsible for some bad things that happen? What if he hadn't intervened when Brother Sam had a gun to his head at the, you know, because of the gangsters? Or the, the, yeah. And by the way, I knew that there was something with that it was someone Brother Sam knew because he saw the dog. Dog didn't bark, always barked for Dexter. And, you know, I realized before it was made clear that, you know, before Dexter did that it was Nick, so I love the way the show just really sets up and pays off. It provides the clues. And also when you go back, when you, when you re-watch earlier episodes with what you know from later episodes, it still makes sense. They clearly had the plan all along. Anyway, yes, the, the... It, it brings up, is, is Dexter sometimes responsible for what happens because he intervenes? And sort of the, the aspect, the idea of a... I don't know if, the, if it's right to say a divine plan that, that the show is really, that this season is really going for that. But, but yeah, some, some sort of a, a fate, a destiny, something that would happen a certain way, if, yeah, and we do see that, you know, what if Dexter hadn't stopped the, you know, the, the game from, you know, when, when they pointed a gun at Brother Sam's head, what if he hadn't, you know, the, the, the issue of Jonah, uh, and this whole thing, you know, what he did that affected that family, and it's not, you know, I'm not saying that I had no, any idea, that I have some sort of solution for that, what, what he should have done that would have prevented what happened, you know, that, that Jonah's sister committed suicide because of their mother, and Jonah then killed his mother, you know, because she caused that. But, it, it does bring up that issue that maybe, excuse me, the silencing my phone just in case. Yeah, the, is everything we do in, with good intentions, does, does that always lead to good results? And that is very much something that also relates to Travis and Dr. Geller. The, you know, like, yeah, Brother Sam points out God can be an excuse for better or for worse in the case of Travis and Dr. Geller. And I'm, I'm of course referring to the hallucinated Dr. Geller, not the, the real one. That's been dead all along, yeah. It, it encourages them, it, it gives them the, 
yeah, the, the idea that they are doing what's right. And like Geller points out, it's right there on the pages. Read the Old Testament if you don't think our God is a, a punisher, a vengeful God. And that again brings up the... It, it doesn't mean that if you are religious, if you read the Old Testament, that you will do what, you know, the, the horrible stuff that's on those pages, but some might, which again doesn't mean that religion is necessarily a bad thing, because some will, you know, it's, yeah, Brother Sam said that the answer is always in the Bible, and it does work for Dexter several times, and if Dexter hadn't you know, again, with, with these, you know, cause and effect. If Dexter hadn't tried to stop Travis, and then, you know, Travis was encouraged to let the, you know, I don't remember her name, the, the Babylon, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be calling her the whore, the Babylon girl. You know, if he, he hadn't let her go because Dexter, you know, got him in the right direction, and, and, you know, Travis's sister also, then maybe, you know, Travis's sister would not have ended up dying if, if Travis hadn't been pulled in the right side. Again, vulnerability, reaching out with light, sometimes, you know, that will let darkness in, into your life. And it's very clear from early on that Travis is the, the weaker one, the less certain one, and Geller, the, the sort of the other side of him. It's, it's very, you know, Bates with what's going on there, yeah. And, yes, I, I know I just spoiled the movie. It's like 50 years old. I hope you'll forgive me for, for that. Now, uh, yeah, the, the, the part of him that's like Geller, that, or that he calls Geller, that the audience calls Geller, until we realize that Geller was dead all along, is the side that pulls him towards the darkness. And the other side is the one that's encouraged by the sister, and and it's also very clear that Travis, for a while, and that's also something I, I thought was very nicely done, once he admits to himself that he killed Geller, and Geller's been dead for, you know, three years or so, that is when he snaps, and the, the dark side takes over. There is no light left in him. You were wrong, old man. I don't need you anymore. You know, that whole thing. And we, we find out that Travis probably killed his parents, caused the car accident when he was a teenager. But then he kind of... You know, he didn't seem to act on those urges after that point. Or certainly that wasn't... We, we don't know that he did at the very least. Yes, the, the, yeah, so, so we have that he killed his parents, apparently, and afterwards the, the darkness subsided in him as he was with his sister. Once he left his sisters, he was, like Claire supporter said, inspired by Dr. Geller, because he is inspiring. He makes people do things that they didn't think. You know, the, the whole thing with, you know, she, she posed naked in the, the, you know, at the college, and she's like, I didn't think I was going to do that. You know, Dr. Geller is, you know, and, and again, we have the, the, the duality of the religion that he inspires, and he means it for good, but Travis takes it to mean something bad. It, it unlocks the darkness within him. It focuses 
his psychopathic and, you know, murderous tendencies. And it, it also, you know, yeah, also partially because it's, it's partially that Dr. Geller is so inspirational, it's also partially because religion gives this certainty, and this certainty can be a good thing. It's, it's a great thing in Brother Sam, but it's a very evil thing in Travis. Now, the... I... I have to say that, that it's, it's a little surprising that for the sixth season, they chose it to be the seventh season. I know. I, I had to go there. It, the, the religious, cultish, murders thing. Yeah. I, I like that, you know, near the end we find out that the Eclipse, you know, that was what they thought to be Armageddon. And it's a sort of... Yeah, it, it makes sense. They, you know, and it hasn't really... You know, they, they don't realize it before they, they, you know, hear about the eclipse, but it, it makes sense. I, I don't remember what exactly the passage said that Travis quoted about it, but there was something, yeah, the blacking out of the sun, something like that. And, you know, the, we, we have several really obviously CGI'd animals, like the, the seven serpents, and the swarm of locusts, I think it was, you know, and, and we have several traps, you know, the one that decapitates the, the, the girl. I don't completely remember who that was. That was the one who was run over, wasn't it? Or was that? No, wait, that was Babylon girl. Anyway, yeah, the... This, this thing of, you know, and with, when Travis tries to take one girl, it also, he fails. And it's, it's that thing of who is driving, is it the Geller side or the Travis side? Now, the, you know, and, and obviously the Geller side is, is continuously, you know, just frustratedly exclaiming, How do I reach this kid? And no, I, I actually did watch this movie. I don't make that reference just because of the hilarious South Park episode. Yeah, the... the and, and I love the way that there are several signs that can be interpreted in several ways. And once you know that Geller was hallucinated, yeah, we, we get quite a different view of them. They... That when, when you think back to the, the street vendor with, you know, you see Travis go out with the sword in hand. The first time we see that, we think Travis killed him. Then when Travis said he didn't kill anyone, you're like, well, I didn't see Travis kill him. Maybe he chickened out. Geller jumped out of the car, ran. He might be fast for his age. He certainly seems strong for his age. Yes, hallucination, I know. And he grabs the sword, kills the street vendor. And then once you find out that Geller's been dead, you're like, well, Travis was the one holding, holding the sword, not hurling the sword. So yeah, there's, there's, there's that. And once you think back to when Geller has to, you know, I don't know, the, the gear stick, I, I don't drive. Yeah, the thing with the... You know, he he puts his hand on on Travis's and makes the car go vroom. <laughs> yeah, and and runs over. Pretty sure that's that's Babylon girl. When yeah, when when you realize that was the Geller side taking over there. Now the I I quite like that that sort of. Laguerta becomes captain, 
and Deb becomes lieutenant. And at first, you know, it's, it's a really great point when, when we, you know, there's that thing of, like, where did Matthew seem really lovey-dovey all of a sudden? What is up with that? And then we see, you know, look where it is all like, you know, well, I knew about this thing, and Matthew's all like, and since you don't reveal it, I am now, you know, they're playing politics. And so when, when it's still in Matthew's control who becomes lieutenant, you know, of course, look where it wants Batista. And Batista does make sense as a choice. You know, I, I love Deborah, but... Batista does have, you know, the, the, the years on him, or as Deborah suggests when, uh, you know, that's, that's also what Mike says, Chicago transfer cop Mike, who suffers from a bad case of foot and mouth disease. He's, you know, he says, well, most of the lieutenants I've worked under have had, and she's like, male genitalia, and he's like, no, no, just years, you know. And yeah, so, of course Matthews promotes Deborah instead, just to, you know, screw over LaGuardia. And yeah, so, yeah. And, and the whole thing that that brings up with Deb being, you know, LaGuardia takes advantage of, once Deb knows who it is, and, you know, you have that big dinner scene with, with Deborah, like, saying, you know, Matthews keeps trying to bring it up, and, and Deb just doesn't know. You know, there's that thing of Dexter suggests, you know, well, just try to avoid him for the time. I'm, I'm having dinner with him tonight. I can't just sit there and talk about the salad. But I can't, apparently she can sit with her face buried in the menu talking about the, the duck and what wine would go well with that. And eventually she cracks. And says, you know, I, I know it was you with, with the, the, you know, the, the prostitute in that room. And then we find out that deafness is contagious. Because then Matthews is all like, you know, white wine goes well with duck. So, so yeah, there's, there's that. And LaGuardia, now in position to play politics yet again, makes, you know, yeah, screws over Matthews. And Matthews thinks that it's it's Deborah, and he's all like, "You are not ready for this, and you've taken away the only person who's going to protect you. Your dad would be very disappointed in you." And then she's like, "You know what? I'm I'm a grown woman. Well, your wife would be your dead wife would be disappointed in you. So yeah, that's that's a big comeback. And and with Deb, we also have this thing of you know, try to break the the patterns." you know, that, that the, the therapist says, you know, I, I love the therapist character, you know, when, when she's all, did I mention that my, you know, Trinity killed my, my, you know, Lundy right in front of me, and, okay, yeah, so that's one, well, actually, that's technically not something that I'm spoiling, that's something this season is spoiling, yeah, I know I'm neurotic about spoilers, bite me, so, yeah, and, and, you know, I, I was with a, a serial killer, and then the therapist is all like, maybe we should, we, should, we should meet twice a week, you know. Although, apparently in this show, they do meet, like, every day, for, for at least some of it, because a lot of it we see that, you know, one episode is basically one day. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure all of them go that way, but, but, yeah, we have that, you know, several episodes in a row, they, they keep you know, seeing each other, which also makes it slightly strange when she, you know, bursts into the, the office and says, you know, I told Dexter I love him. And, you know, at first, the, the, you know, before she says that, when she just bursts in, the therapist is like, you know, we could schedule an appointment. What, it's not your appointment? You're the, you know, do you have other patients, lady? Anyway, yeah, the, this whole thing of Deborah she breaks patterns, you know, she says to LaGuardia, this is one pattern I'm breaking right now. And she sort of, she's becoming a better lieutenant like that. It's, she's accepting more responsibility, that's great. That, and the thing of, you know, choosing Mike, who, I mean, I said before, yeah, he's, he says the wrong thing a lot, but he's not 
a stupid guy and he's definitely not a jerk. He's, he, or at least he doesn't want to be a jerk. He sometimes says things he really shouldn't verbalize, but you know, they should just stay in there or kind of, maybe he should have, maybe, maybe there should be a spin-off called, you know, Anderson. Actually, Mike, I guess it would be called. After, after the first name, yeah, Dexter, yeah. And it should have his inner monologue. So, you know, when he says something, yeah. Maybe that's why they haven't done that, because he, he says what he thinks way too much. Yeah, so, so anyway, he's clearly a great cop. She made the right call there. You know, she was like, she went through the files, she made the right call. He helps a lot, you know, he's the one who introduces the, the concept of tableaus. Now, the, I love the bit where, you know, Quinn's like all, you know, shot in front of now, now look who's behind the, you know, behind the curb or whatever it was, yeah. Because suddenly, you know, they come in, we think that this, you know, it's this guy. Oh yeah, I know, I, I already checked into that. And, and Quinn's like, son of a, yeah. So, so, yeah, we, and, and I love the bit where Deborah, you know, she's talked to it, and, and the, the, she's talked to the therapist about Dexter, and he's like, why do you expect him to suddenly change? Well, I, would you expect a chair to suddenly become a table? No, because a chair is a chair. And then, you know, she, you know, she's like, with, with Dexter, look, I know, you're a chair, okay? I, I'm a what? <laughs> and then, you know, it's like, Batista's like, you look confused. Does your sister say things you don't understand all the time? She ever call you a chair? Not that I can recall. And then later, he's like, "Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, okay, I, I love my sister. Of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to meet her halfway." And he's like, "You know, I'm, I'm here if, if you need a chair." And she's like, "What? Earlier." You said that I was a chair. I know you're a chair, but I, I need I need you to be a table. What are you even saying? He's like, I'm trying to understand. Okay, yeah, he didn't say it quite like that, but but it's just this. I'm trying. I'm trying to meet you halfway, and I don't understand what you're saying. I can't explain it to you right now. Yeah. Anyway, I it, in general I love the developments in this season. The, you know, at the start of the season, Deborah has been with Quinn for a year, and he's like, he wants, again, we have the, the side focus of the future, he wants a future, he's, he's too old to just be going out, getting drunk, and having sex with someone whose name he doesn't even know, you know, Deborah, girl from bar, girl from bar, Deborah, and she's like, Cindy, this is, you know, the, the you know, he says something about X or so. Oh yeah, I, I brought her here because Deborah is so over me. And, and Cindy's like, you brought me to your ex's house. Have a nice life. Yeah, you know, she's not as classless as Quinn is. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, he wants to marry her and she just can't quite. And there's that thing of, did you ever love me? And she pauses and, you know, I guess I have my answer. And it's the thing, you know, she says that during the season as well. There's no drama with him. And that's all I want right now. You know, considering past choices. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, yeah, so the... the so, once he realizes she won't marry him, he becomes really childish. And, you know, he tries to hurt her in a number of ways. You know, the, the thing about, you know, oh, I, I packed up your stuff. Oh, you didn't have to do that. Oh, yeah. It's in the garage next to the big bag of fertilizer. Wow. That was, that was a quick turn. You know, at first, you know, it's like, oh, that's, that's a nice gesture. And then, oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, it's...
You no, Quinn, you really didn't have to do that. Next time I'll pick up my own stuff, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so so the, the yeah, and the way he's I mean, we've always known he wasn't the most mature or stable guy, but this time he really Yeah. It just and and it it comes I, I really thought to myself, you know, is, is Deborah gonna end up having to fire him? Or or the word, I'm not I don't know, rank stuff, you know, I don't know which of them would have to. And yeah, she she chews him out and Batista chews him out and it's like, you know, I've you know, I'm putting him in for your transfer. And he's like, I talked to my union rep. I I'm an alcoholic. So, you know, and Batista points out, you know, you're abusing the system. And Quinn says, you know, I'm in it for the long haul. I really want to be here. And I'm very interested in seeing where that goes for next season because at the end of the day, yeah, he does want to do... I mean, he did save Batista's life from, from the fire. And you can, you know, talk about maybe he should have been there to begin with. And, you know, certainly it wasn't responsible of him to get drunk. And you can't help but laugh your ass off when you find out that, you know, it's like, you know, he talks to the, the girl, because he lost his gun, the, the idiot, and, and he's like, well, maybe it's in her car, and he's like, did I leave something in your car last night? Oh, you want my mom, and then he's like, hotness has got to run in the family, right? And then she comes to the door and is like, no, no, this can't be, oh, right, I remember you. Did you meet last night at the at the strip club? No, the Waffle House uh, across the street. This one was all hands. And 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 Quinn's like, you are not telling telling anyone about this. I can say what I want. <laughs> that's awesome. That's 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 what'll happen if you get you know really drunk and just go yeah and and then follow the the. <laughs> yeah, those urges, yeah, so, but, but yeah, I, I quite liked Quinn's development over the course of the season. He's also, you know, he's trying to make Deborah look bad once she's become lieutenant, and he, you know, he thinks that her becoming lieutenant is why they didn't get married, you know. Now, the, when, you know, I gotta bring up, of course, the, as, as other skeptics have done, the, you know, Dexter prays for Harrison during the, the surgery, and then, you know, his, his father points out, you know, if this is your, you know, if this was God's work, then you have to live up to, you know, what he says. And the season doesn't say for sure if he accomplishes that or what it is, but again, you know, it brings up light or darkness, and light saved his son, or, or it was light that his son got saved, but you know, in that case, maybe what God wants for, for Dexter is for him to pursue the light, and he does that in part by, well, well in general, just focusing on Harrison, focusing on Harrison's future. He makes sure that Harrison goes away for those 48 hours so he's safe, you know, and he's, yeah, you know, it's not by accident that Harrison is the one who's threatened at the end of the season by Travis, you know, it could be someone else that is, you know, a really good, I mean, it has to be a lamb, it has to be someone innocent, it could be Jamie, you know, she's, you know, she's, she's just sunbeams pretty much all the time, you know, I love that, you know, when, when, the, the one time that she basically isn't is, you know, when she's like, 
you know, she gets a little annoyed with Batista for trying to protect her, which is, you know, also why Lewis, you know, backs off a little, and then the, you know, but then he gets some, some words of wisdom from Masuka in matters of the heart. Always follow your penis. So, yeah, it, that's, that's Masuka in a nutshell. Yeah. I, I apologize for just having made you think about it. You know, Masuka's nutshell. Yeah, the the that was a tangent. That was that was quite the tangent. Jamie almost never shows anything but but like optimism and enthusiasm. You know, when Deborah, you know, starts with the fight because you know Deborah's you know drowning in work, and at that point of the season, she definitely isn't. You know, she. She hasn't grown enough to quite accept the full responsibility, you might say, and yeah, she, you know, she leaves out the the you know images of murder and the like, and you know, and and Deborah is what was it like yeah can't can't you keep you're the nanny keep track of Harrison oh you mean I'm not your your maid here I found your ring you know. <laughs> And, and that whole fight, and then, you know, the next time they meet, I think it is, you know, at, at you know, Deborah's party. And, and before that, Jamie's also like, you're sure that I was invited? I really don't want to crash your sister's party with Harrison. You know, he does not need that at this point in his life. And, yeah, it just brings up the, yeah, yeah, they, they meet at the party. And, and Jamie is like, again, just old sunbeams, and she goes to grab, you know, to, to have a drink. And she's like, Harrison is just out like a light on your bed. And then she pauses because, uh-oh, I just had a fight with this woman. She puts the, the, the cup back. If that's at all inconvenient, I could, you know, it's just awesome. And then Deborah's like, yeah, and, and they start over. Because they yeah they got off on the wrong foot. They're they're both very nice people, very dedicated to their jobs, and Deborah is just not the person you want too much around your child. You know, once she's out of that apartment, once she's out of Dexter's, it's fine. You know, and and the whole thing with you know someone was killed here. This is a nice place. It's really too bad that someone was killed here. And, and the, the guy who wants to rent it out is also like, when can I rent this place out? How much is this cleanup gonna, you know, how long is the cleanup gonna take? And then I think it's Batista who goes with Deborah. And they're like, well, this is a nice place, but someone was just murdered here. There's still blood. You know, at this point, that blood is pretty much seeped into the floorboards. It's gonna take a lot. To clean that up, and yeah, I mean, you gotta put on the contract that someone was killed here. People are gonna see that if they wanna rent this place, and and he's just like all in shambles, and then Deborah goes in for you know, yeah, the the <laughs> closing the deal, and she's like, tell you what, I pay two thirds of the current rent, and you don't have to worry about another you know, person renting this place for a while. If you handle the cleanup, you have a deal, you know. Yeah. Now, the... Yes, with when... When Sam comes back from having been shot by Nate, you know, he, he dies soon after, but he just has time to tell Dexter, you know, yes, it was Nick, but I want you to tell him that I forgive him. And... That's the thing, you know, the, the, there, there's that thing of hatred won't bring him back. If you let it go, you will be at peace with it, you know. There is nothing that, yeah, no good comes from the, the continued hatred. And you might say, you know, to, to kill the person will prevent him from going on to kill someone else. And obviously someone should be prevented from 
doing something, you know, when, when they've done something as bad as killing someone, it's, especially in cold blood like that, you know, when it isn't self-defense, they should be prevented from doing it again. I'm not going to argue the death penalty in this video. Basically, it still doesn't help to hate the person. That's just giving them too much power over yourself. Now, the... Yeah, Dexter is supposed to forgive him, but instead he gives him his second baptism in, you know, off, off that beach. And, yeah, the, the, you know, it leads to Rudy coming back to Dexter. And for a full episode, Rudy lures Dexter to have fun, you know, take risks, the, the, gun that they steal, you know, okay, okay, he needed a kill tool, but it's still maybe more the fact that he doesn't, he, he isn't more careful with the gun, you know, he leaves it in the car, and yeah, the, the, the guy, Shady, whose first name is not Slim, I can make that joke, I'm not in perfect shape either, yeah, is, um, it's, it's this thing of, did Dexter taking more risks because of Rudy lead to Shady? You know, if he hadn't crossed through the, you know, the cornfield and found Dex the, the little garden, the, the, you know, the result of the green thumbs of Shady, maybe he wouldn't have to kill Shady. And, yeah, at the end of it, it is this thing of, you know, forgiveness. He ends up forgiving Jonah and says to him, forgive yourself. Again, it does not do you any good to hang on to it. What's important is the future. And there we again have the, the both the side focus and the main focus, religion. Religion also preaches forgiveness, especially... I guess it's mainly Christianity. I don't currently recall. It's been a while since I looked into Judaism and Islam, but certainly Christianity. And again, it's it's this thing of the reason he killed his mother was because she drove their the you know Jonah's sister. I almost said their sister. Jonah, they're not that inbred. The family has problems, but not exactly of that sort. So yeah, the the although some of what we've seen before might lead you to think anyway, yeah. So we have the the. By the way, that does this is like one of the best seasons, right up there with season four and season one. Anyway, yeah, the. You know, Jonah killed the, you know, the mother because she drove his sister to suicide. So he feels like he should have gotten the two of them away from the mother sooner. And now it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like revenge, you might say. But, it, again, it was the light in Jonah that drove him to kill, not the darkness. So... Yeah, you know, forgive yourself. Let let it go and focus on the future. Don't let it happen again. The next time you're around someone who has that dark of an influence on your life, you know, don't don't let them keep having that kind of influence. You know, L leave them. Don't kill them. Yeah. So the and and the the season also brings up the notion of sin and absolving of sin the the catholic priest who's i think it's dementia he's suffering from has no wait alzheimer's something ironically i can't remember which yeah so so he yeah he brings up that issue and once Dexter talks about, the, you know, I love the, the first couple of reactions, you know, I lied to, you know, 
I drive past the speed limit. Who hasn't? I lie to my sister. Eh, that's, that happens. I've killed people. Go on. <laughs> a lot of people. And then, you know, he says, murder is a mortal sin. And there we have the, the thing of... Again, Dexter seeking approval, seeking acceptance, seeking some way to make what he does okay. You know, Harry's code is part of what he, you know, you, you might say that's the result of, of some of it. But, yeah, it's, it's this thing of what exactly, yeah, is, you know, is, is religion going to be accepting of him, and then, yeah, that, that brings him to that point. As long as he keeps killing, religion will not accept him. And maybe it is too late, maybe because he has killed. Now, the, and, and there's the, the notion of the right thing, you know, Travis believes that DDK you know, the Doomsday Killing was the right thing, but, you know, Dexter brings up maybe stopping, or he tells Travis, stopping DDK is the right thing. At that point, he thinks that they're talking about stopping Professor Geller, which, again, Dexter's using the light. He's saying, you know, I mean, he thinks he, he, he's going there to kill Travis, but when Travis says that Geller, again, the, the part of him that's Geller, killed those people, Dexter lets him go, and that is, again, the light speaking, that the, the light that guides Dexter's actions. He becomes too vulnerable, and because of that, you know, darkness... Yeah, John Hurt, Hellboy, you know, darkness prevails. Yeah. And, and yeah, that, that happens sometimes, and that again is what I really like about this season. It doesn't say that religion solves everything. It doesn't say that light, that being a good person, solves everything. There, there has to be a balance and a sort of... Yeah, some, sometimes you have to be careful about who you reach out to. Not everyone can be saved. Not everyone still has room in them for light. Which, at this point, I feel like I should make clear, I am very much in favor of rehabilitating. So, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying there are many people who can't be brought back with light. Now, the... Yes, the, the aspect of the, the hand, <laughs> the, the um, not Geller's hand, though I might also comment on that, the, the hand of the, uh, yeah, from, from the ice truck killer, that, you know, Daphne from Heroes, the, the Ryan in this show, you know, who's attracted to Masuka, at which point you know there's something wrong with her, she she sells it for rent. At first, I thought it was some kind. Of, she does seem really into this stuff with the, you know, yeah, these these murder things and yeah. Maybe it was just to get to see the the you know the hand, and then she wanted another thing for the you know again for rent presumably. But yeah, you know, considering the 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 hero's stuff with her character, I half expected another lame twist for her character. You know, when heroes did it, it was very clearly to try to <laughs> try to get the same kind of effect that Lost had, which it really failed with. So they tried twice. And, yeah, I worried that maybe the actress was now cursed with that. But, but yeah, I, I seriously thought she was going to turn out to be a psycho, but I guess she was just a red herring. Although, maybe she turns up again down the line. And then Lewis 
comes in and we find out that he was the one who bought the hand and it's not entirely clear why. He ends up giving it back to Dexter, although by the end of this season Dexter hasn't seen it, but maybe it just happens off screen or something, but yeah, you know, Travis intercepts that package. Now, yeah, that, that does bring up, is Lewis a psycho? And, and we have the cliche of, you know, oh, he just, you know, he's been living vicariously through his games, and now we should focus on something real. And, yeah, it, not every gamer is like that. Some, some of us just like to unwind after a long day. You know, it doesn't mean that focusing a lot on games means you're not also living your life. But, yeah. It is, you know, this is my hobby. Films and games are my hobby. It, it doesn't mean that I, you know, it doesn't replace my life. Anyway, yes, that... Uh, I suppose I shouldn't maybe comment on... The, the other aspect brought up by the by Dexter, who says he doesn't believe in anything. Maybe let's tackle that one before. I'm, I'm going to get to him praying in the hospital. But first, when he says he doesn't believe in anything, if I recall when this aired, some YouTube atheists took issue with it. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. I personally don't really see it as that, because he isn't really expressly an atheist, and he certainly doesn't represent atheists. He's a serial killer. It's not, you know, and and clearly, if if he had religion, I mean, Travis has religion. That doesn't make him less of a serial killer. So they're not. I mean, this season expressly tells us having religion does not mean you're not gonna do awful things. You know, there's the, the first kill, I think, of the season when, in Dexter's first, when, you know, at the, at the reunion, when he goes to kill the jock. You know, and there's that thing, what would Jesus have done, you know? How do you reconcile this with being, you know, religious? And, yeah, he kind of feels like it's right what he does because of, you know, of religion, or he'll be forgiven. I don't remember his exact words, but... That does bring up that issue. So, no, Dexter is not your typical atheist, and I'm not 100% sure it actually says he is an atheist. I suppose you might say that when he says he doesn't believe in anything, at least in regards to religion, that means he's technically an atheist, but it doesn't mean that he sees himself as someone... I mean, he, you don't see him going out and finding atheist groups, you know, to, to sort of, you know, go with that. So, yeah. Anyway, yes, the, him, him praying, that I'm fairly certain some people t took issue with. And I'm not saying that, you know, anything disparaging about them in, in, but the way I see it, again, it doesn't say that this is what atheists do in that situation, it might say that that is what some atheists will do, that it is, and, and if, you might also say that it's not necessarily a positive that, I mean, if, if anything, it maybe says that religion is like a source of comfort, whether you, I mean, at that point, Dexter doesn't believe, he just he feels like, well, maybe it'll do it. Like, you know, if he had been told that maybe, you know, doing a river dance around Harrison's, you know, bed as he's, you know, in surgery might help him, he would probably have done that. He's just trying to do whatever he can, which doesn't, you know, if... It, Skeptics and atheists who do not believe in religion might not do that. Some might, but it doesn't mean that they believe. It doesn't mean that it sticks with them as believing, you know. 
So, yeah, I don't particularly take issue with it. Yeah, I think that was what I wanted to say about that. And, uh, yeah, we of course have the... Oh, I, I did want to mention about Lewis before moving on. Of course he could have sniped the eBay auction. As, as he also points out that that was probably what happened, you know, with the computer programming. Yeah, actually I had a little more to say about Lewis. Yes, the, the, the video game, you know, this is the really cool part, which I haven't even told Jamie yet. If, if you had told Jamie, she would probably not have been with him anymore, but, you know, he's like, oh, Dexter, he's intense, so he'll get this. And it's like, you get to be the serial killer, you can play as historical famous serial killers and yeah at, at that point the the yeah Dexter says that's that's offensive and you know he says you know vicarious thrill you know how could you possibly know what it's like to take a life and again I suppose that does bring up this thing of you know at what point does do video games go too far? I think that is... Yeah, I mean, when you're saying that you can now pretend to be this historically famous serial killer and, you know, try to... I don't know, I think that's... It's at least very close to the line, but I'm I'm always very careful in matters of censorship. And again, I think, I feel like I gotta say, of course I'm not in favor of anything like that in real life. You know, at at the very most, like LARPing in that kind of game. But of course, nothing that actually hurts people. But but yeah, it's this thing of. It does bring up, does Lewis actually want to kill? And he's still there at the end of the season. It's just, you know, my last day is coming up. And, you know, Masuka, Masuka Yoda's at him. And he says, you know, maybe I could throw some, what was it, like, yeah, I don't remember the exact word, but yeah, you know, he could still throw some stuff his way. I'd really appreciate it, you know, so... He might still show up later, and maybe he will turn out to be a serial killer. As, you know, he says, you know, I've been in games so long, maybe I should just do something in real life, and yeah. You know, anytime you meet a new character in this show, you're like, is that a serial killer? I, I'm, I'm calling it, that guy might be a serial killer. Maybe not, maybe it's this other, you know, person, but yeah. Maybe it's this girl instead, but uh, yeah. Now, the... Yeah, and, and I, I'm not sure I already covered this completely, so just to make sure... It's, it's clear in this season, you know, Dexter chooses he wants to be a good father for Harrison. You know, he, he freely chooses to host that thing for the children. You know, the, the other father's like, my wife's in a meeting, what's your excuse? You know, he's like, I, I wish me with you. It's normally the lady who does this, but I had to be here, so, you know. And, yeah, Dexter's like, well, there's my son, you know, and, and, and Harrison's bringing the cookies to all the other kids, like, like Dexter with the donuts. That's awesome. That is, yeah. <laughs> Which, again, you know, it's a positive trait that he's passing on there. Now, when... Yeah, when, when you know, one of the, the traps, the tripwire thing with DDK kills, you know, you know, the, the... Yeah, it unleashes a bloodbath, carry style, on several of the, you know, homicide detectives including Dexter, and he's like, Travis doesn't know wrath until he's seen mine, you know, and it's like, yeah, that's bringing up some bad memories for Dexter right there, you know, so, yeah. And the... 
yeah, that, that brings me to the, the stereotype of the angry atheist. In fact, the angry atheist professor. So, yeah, it's, it's, I guess that's, that's at least a twofer. Maybe it's even like a hat trick. But, yeah, I wish that they had had him say at least one thing that atheists actually use as a serious argument against against faith and, and religion rather than him just yeah being the angry atheist you know he he mocks religion but he doesn't challenge it with serious arguments you know and and even I mean the book you know the, the book promises to, to you know to destroy every creationist's argument yeah that that has been done I, I guess maybe they're they're like saying he's yeah, I don't know, Dawkins, maybe Hitchens, I don't know, but yeah, something like that. And yeah, of course, the, you know, DDK murders him. And it is this thing, and, and that's again where, you know, we think that Geller was the one who ruined the elevator, and Dexter's then stuck there, and then Travis helps him, and he's like, I'm sorry, I know you told me to stay in place, but, you know, uh, obviously, Travis just went up there, got the the atheist professor, st you know, stuffed him somewhere, and helped Dexter out. And then he's like, I, I didn't see Geller. Oh, man, maybe he's somewhere else, you know. Anyway, yeah. I, and I maybe also wish that they hadn't gone for, maybe at least just stick with an angry atheist stereotype. Maybe don't go for the atheist professor that's like, you know, corrupting the, well, I suppose we don't really see him chastising a, you know, a, a religious student, you know, he doesn't go and say, you know, in, in Kevin Sorbo's voice that if he doesn't, if, if he won't write that God is dead, he will have to defend the, what was it, the antithesis, you know, he, he doesn't go and, and like ban all Christmas, you know, there, there will be no Christmas, what was it, pageant this year or something like that. Yeah, I've seen all those trailers. You're not missing anything. You, you will probably, you know, if you need a face palm or, or a good laugh, maybe seek them out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wish they had treated that, that they hadn't fallen into that stereotype, because I suppose you could say that Dexter is an atheist. Let's go with that. Then you have this professor who's an atheist, and that's about it for the season. Everyone else is either overtly religious or maybe imply. I mean, Deborah says, I'm not the most avid churchgoer. But yeah, she still is, you know. And yeah, several others. I just feel like there should have been at least one character. And yes, I appreciate that Dexter is one, you know, it's through his eyes. It's, that he's the lens that we see religion through for the season. But but yeah, just at least one other character who is an atheist, just represent that side of it as well, especially with how many positive religious characters the show has. And and I'm not saying that there are not angry atheists and you know yeah, very aggressive anti-theists out there. I was one for a while, and I am not saying that there are no college professors who are very adamant against religion. I, again, I'm just saying there are plenty of atheists and skeptics who are not aggressive towards religious people. Now, the yes, 
the Travis's two disciples. I like that again we have the weaker one. Beth is very clearly the more nervous of of the two and yeah, it it's it it maybe actually works in her favor at the end because she does end up you know not showing that you know she's not zealous enough to raise any alarm bells for the you know yeah the, the few cops she, she talks to and, and the like. And and the whole thing with the, the poison gas, wormwood that you know Dexter just barely averts and then you know it does still affect him some and yeah he should have gone to the ER and he didn't. Again you might say light versus darkness. He is he is so sure that he has to kill Travis and it ends up you know, yeah, I mean, objectively speaking, in the season, it delays him quite a bit that he pursues Travis rather than going to the ER, because it means that Travis gets the upper hand, he uses the animal tranquilizer on him, if I recall. Actually, I'm not entirely sure about that, but also the, the bit where, you know, he's like, well, this is animal tranquilizer. Is that maybe the, the dog? At the, yeah. Brother Sam's dog, I think, when he's trying to get in there, and then he finds out that Nick is fine. Anyway, yeah, the yeah, the the whole thing with trying to to get Travis, and it delays him. And yeah, again, you know, do you follow the light or do you follow the darkness? And does following one necessarily lead to? You know, he followed the darkness, and it didn't lead to him killing Travis at that point. Now, I do think that it's very mean of Travis to, you know, he says, you know, you should believe in God to Batista. And he's like, I do believe in God. You know, obviously, he's Latino, he's, yeah, Catholic, probably. It's, a lot of them are. Again, I'm not saying that there are no Latino skeptics, I know a few. Anyway, yes, he's, he's like, you know, well, since you believe in God, you better pray and fast. That is just mean. Look, Batista might not be the, the least, you know, he's not entirely skinny, but it's just, it mean to ask him to, to fast. And I also partially expected him to, to follow up and, you know, pray fast love. Uh, yeah, so, so, anyway, fast pray love. Yeah, I screwed up that reference royally. Yeah, the, I, I like that, you know, the whole thing with Dexter creating his own tableau, you know, sending a message to, you know, saying, I am the devil, you know, to the, or, or, actually, he's saying that, Geller was the devil because the, the Geller's hand is there, you know, and it's painted in. Actually, is it painted in Geller's blood? Anyway, yeah. And, you know, he says, you know, the beast is coming for you, the, the whole thing, and it shows the, the slice of life. And Travis does fall for that trap, but again, because Dexter is so. You know, and, and it makes sense. Yeah, Dexter is so avid in pursuing Travis. And it makes sense because he was told if you yeah, if you stress yourself too much, it's going to mean that you know it's going to make it happen more. And yeah, he's he's saying that he's excited about finally getting Travis. Of course it happens. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't just follow the whims of the screenwriters, you know, some Something I, I've found that this show really does not do that often. They, they tend to be very organic in the scripts. Now, the... I suppose that's more or less it. I quite like the, the bit with the mask. You know, Travis has already put on one of Dexter's shirts, and he goes, you know, the, the kindergarten isn't looking for you know, yeah, they're not looking for serial killers to, to come in there. And 
yeah, he puts on the, the lion's mask and goes off, goes off, and, you know, they just think, oh, well, he's just playing along with his kid, and he's going there, and it's just one of the creepiest sights, you know, whenever you have a psycho walking there hand in hand with a child, it's always just, ugh. And, yeah, it, it really works. It's very clever. And Dexter's choice of animal, of course. And I... Yeah, that is it. So, yeah, can't wait to watch next season. It's... I love this show. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment. And, hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.